Yo, come in. Yo, come on over. Come here for the exciting conclusion. I gotta show you the work that I've been doing up all night while well, I've been doing drugs and being manic and out of my mind. Hurt? Here, come on over. We're live right now, but we're not live, but we're recording. So, right. so just to give you kind of the background of, of what I've been up to, right, is that here, no, here, come on over, come on over, sit next to me here. You want to get This is we're doing our, our fucking YouTube debut here. Um, so, in the last 24 hours, I've been on a roller coaster. All right. You know that I don't have any social media presence because I'm a spooky motherfucker that doesn't trust corporations like that, right? Correct. So now. What I've managed to do is put out a series of one minute kind of stand-up specials, like all these videos are only like two, three minutes long. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, there's no like over-rehearsing. I shot them in one take by myself on my phone with my phone leaning against my laptop here like this. Um, and pretty much I put out some really offensive content where I use the word nigger faggot cuck and there was another one. Nigger faggot cut. I don't know, in 60 seconds. It was a lot, really fast. Now, I didn't call anyone that. <laughs> <laughs> so then, <clears throat> so then naturally, the, um, the fucking moral outrage machine of the internet fires up, being like, this white dude is saying nigger. Yeah. And so they report me, and they made it so that it became age-restricted, right? Uh-huh. And so then I wrote back to them being like, hey, I didn't call anyone a nigger faggot cuck or whatever. And like, if you're just saying that like white people can't say this shit, then fuck off like what's the deal with the r rating we're just talking about words i'm not calling not even like not even throwing six and stones over here bro there's yeah. nobody in the room but me white people are allowed to say nigger in the shower when they fucking do rap songs okay yeah. right like yeah. so if i want to put a camp like do i have to go to OnlyFans if i want to fucking post videos of me in the shower fucking like singing rap songs do i, do I have to sweep the house with the camera to prove that i'm alone before so, so, so anyway it's kind of a think piece right yeah. very concise but I got YouTube to overrule their decision in less than 24 hours. So I managed to have no social media presence, get enough outrage to get canceled and age restricted, and then get YouTube, the most monolithic, stubborn fucking yeah, organization, they, uh, to change their, their thing in, in less than 24 hours. And the internet is still not even in on the joke. They're still dumping their righteous outrage into it. Which makes it even funnier because, like, the judges at YouTube are like, "You're right. That's an art piece, and you weren't even offending anybody." Children should see that. So now that I've got YouTube on my side, the children should see my magic show. The next thing that I'm doing is cosplaying as Lucifer, uh, retelling the story of the Bible from his perspective and calling people out in the next series, <laughs> right? And then I'm going to do a something's burning. Where we take, we're gonna do something burning. Where I dress as Burt Kreischer and and always have like an irrational amount of vodka around, kind of like Ricky from Trailer Park yeah. Boys, right? As the host, while we have professional chefs try to take ingredients from jail and try to make something good with it, the way that they do in jail. Yeah. Right. We're not even give them shit. Like they're gonna have to burn milk. If you want to sizzle something, you're gonna have to light milk cartons on fire with the battery out of the remote and some coax cable you steal out of the TV, like a fucking secret <laughs> agent, right? And then we get people from jail, like. $20 to go shop at Walmart or something like that. And we see what between $300 on your books in jail or $20 at Walmart, who can make the best thing, right? And we, we fucking switch a route of this bitch. So that's the next project I'm going to work like on. That. I would love if you showed up for it. It'd be a fucking great addition to it. <laughs> okay. Right? Um, hey, the other thing is that, like, I called Curtis Nelson, the head of Joe... Did I tell you about that? How I called Curtis Nelson mm -hmm. the head of Rogan's thing? Yeah. And, and now... I am leading a campaign on Reddit called Curtis Nelson Syndrome Awareness, which is like, it's kind of like the disease where, where you don't recognize faces, yeah. right? You can't recognize faces in the person. Well, Curtis Nelson Syndrome is when people look at someone's face and can't recognize an actor that they're being trolled, right? And, and so all of society, I think right now, it has Curtis Nelson Syndrome Awareness, uh, has Curtis, Curtis Nelson Syndrome where they can't tell the difference between real and fake news or what's art and what's like mm -hmm. real life they were so used to watching like Britney Spears and everyone like live stream their mental illness out of contact either. I followed her on Instagram just to see what she posts and mm -hmm. it's not ever disappointing so then the other thing now is that because these platforms of free speech are such a pain in the ass and are so censorshipful I'm done doing the free trial on this fucking platform I'm gonna go do comedy on OnlyFans and they're going to have to subscribe for $6.66 a month if they want to tune into the show. 
And at ultimately at the end of this, the end goal, the end goal here is what to convince is to convince uh, either the government, the the uh, Illuminati, or the fundamentalist Christians that I am the second coming of the Antichrist, so that they assassinate me and make me a martyr so I can get some fucking rest because I've been up all night doing drugs. And trying to kill myself, and I just can't bait anyone into not loving me. <laughs> <laughs> the end!